My commitment story has to do a lot with this box in my journey. I'm an author and a speaker and an agent for social change. I'm a globetrotter, trying to get people to recognize the value of play every single day and to really, truly recognize how play can be transformative. So inside this box, I have probably the most important icon from my life, and it's this little ball. Now, it's not just any ball. This ball is 28 years old. I learned courage from this little red rubber ball. I learned discipline. I learned how to sacrifice. I learned how to deal with disappointment. I learned how to challenge myself. But probably the most important thing I learned from a little kickball growing up in Philadelphia was how to dream big. Big, audacious, ridiculous dreams. So in order for you to understand why this ball was so important that I passed it down to my son, he then passed it down to my younger son, and then in turn shared it with my stepdaughter, I have to take you back to my childhood. We've had a very challenging childhood. My parents made a lot of bad decisions because of their addictions. We were nomads from a very early age, moving from place to place to place to place to place. My grandparents knew we were going to have a challenging life. So they said, if you get in trouble, you will memorize our phone number. You will tell someone to call us, we will come and get you. My grandfather and grandmother said, we're going to do the best we can, but we don't know how well we can do for you boys. You're going to have to raise yourselves. And I thought about that at six again. I'm like, raise myself, raise myself. Wait. Can I just go play, Pop-Pop? What, what? Can I just go play? Isn't there a playground near the house? He says, sure. He says, well, you want me to drop you off? Yeah, could you just drop me off at the playground? So he drops me off at the playground. There got to be some kids up here. Nobody's at the playground. I'm looking around, I'm looking around, I'm looking around, and I see in the corner of this playground a ball just like this. And I go walking over to the ball, and I pick it up, and I start to bounce it. And I start to bounce this ball, and I start to think about everything that I've been through. What's going to happen to us? Are they going to kick us out of the house? Are they going to separate us? When are we going to start school? And I got more angry and more angry, and the more angry I got, the more upset I got, the more anxious I got. And so I just took the ball, I turned around, and I went, boom! For whatever reason, I just felt like I had to go after that ball. I noticed something. All that worry, all that concern, all that noise was gone. I said, I'm doing that again. So I turned, I said, I'm going to get it in nine bounces this time. Boom! And I waited and tore off running. Okay, now eight, boom, six, boom, five. And I started playing this game. I got so engrossed in it, I didn't notice the kids from the neighborhood had come up, but they'd been watching me. All of a sudden I hear that, what are you doing over there? I'm like, I'm just playing, come over here. And I walk over really sheepishly, and the kids say, listen, you want to play with us? You're welcome to. And little did I know that my love and passion and that community that I got welcomed in would turn into my lifetime chase. If you don't have a red rubber ball, why are you getting up in the morning? It's the difference between existing and living. Your chase, your passion. See, that metaphor, that ball about the chase can be anything. Can be science, can be math, can be literature, can be anything. But it has to be about you and what inspires you every day.